Okay, so today I am working in the 100 Days of Bible Promises devotional journal that Shauna Noel wrote, and it's day six. Day six is about the promise of do not worry. Now that doesn't necessarily sound like a promise. It sounds more like a command or an invitation or something like that. But um, implied within the Bible verses that tell us not to worry, God wouldn't tell us not to worry if he was just going to leave us out in the cold, right? So implied in these verses is do not worry because I am God. And so I was taking a look at the Bible verses that Shauna lists, and one was Matthew 6, 25. And that's the one that talks about, um, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? And that one to me speaks to how God sees priorities. And obviously God knows that we need to eat and drink and all that kind of stuff. And so he says, those your priorities are my priorities. I will keep you fed. I will keep you sheltered. I will keep you safe. So just stick with me. Like if I can do those things, can't I do so much more? So he kind of says like, trust me with these, what seem to be little things to him, like food and drink and clothing. And then we can step into a bigger trust. Next time we worry about something, we can let it go to God because we're no longer Uh, stuck worrying about the smaller things, right? And food and clothing and shelter are not small things. But in God's view of this world, they are and he's ready and waiting to provide all those things. Now this was kind of fun. I got these stickers in the Purpose Driven Essentials box. And they were just a little um, extra that they sent uh, with this box and they were Easter. And since it's after Easter, I was like, Oh, I don't know if I'll be able to use those, but I totally used them today. Instead of spelling out happy Easter, I spelled out the word pray. And, um, I use like the hearts and the florals and the colors match perfectly. So that was really kind of fun. Then another verse that Shauna lists, um, is can any of you add a cubit to his height by worrying? That's Luke 12, 25. I love that because God's like, okay, logically people. So he applies, he not applies, he, um, he's appealing to our logic. Like, like will worry really do anything? And he seems to, um, kind of have a good sense of humor here. Like if you worry, can you even like grow an inch from worrying? No not going to work. So logically, he appeals to our logic and he says, logically, worry is a useless waste of time. So don't worry. Don't need to worry. Then Proverbs 12, 25, he says, worry weighs a person down. An encouraging word cheers a person up. So there he's appealing to the side of us that needs to know that we're cared for, that needs to know kind of why? Why don't you want us to worry? Because in our culture, it seems so logical to worry, right? Things are kind of crazy, always in the news, and there are things to worry about, and family members to worry about, and paying bills to worry about, and all these things, and those even seem like responsible things to worry about, right? So um, I think here God is saying, hey, I don't want you to worry because it weighs you down. I want to take on these, these issues that you have. I want to carry them for you. I want the burden. I've already taken care of it. I can do this. It's kind of like you wouldn't want your little child to walk around worrying about how to pay for rent, right? Because they're six. A six-year-old should not be worried about how to pay for rent. And that's our job as the parent, right? We are the ones that take on the concerns of paying for the bills and making sure there's groceries and making sure the rent gets paid and all those kind of things. And so what God is saying is we're like that little six-year-old kid and he's saying, hey, you guys come over here. Like, let me take care of these things because I know how to take care of them. And you may not even know how to take care of them even if you try. So don't worry. It's weighing you down. So that, that, that verse really, um, encourages me. Um, and then what we can do when we're worried 
is the verse at the top of the second page. It says, do not worry about everything or anything, but in everything through prayer and petition and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And that goes on. That's Philippians 4, 6. And it goes on later to say, and the peace that passes, um, God will grant you the peace that passes all understanding um, if you're able to let go of your worries and give them to him. So that says how. That's the how. He's gone through the, here are the priorities. I've got you. Here's the logic. You can't change anything by worrying anyway. Here's because I care for you. I don't want you weighed down, but I know you're still going to struggle with worry. So what do you do? So you pray, you pray without ceasing, you give your prayers as petitions to God, which means you ask for things. Like if we were to petition a judge for something, we would be asking the judge for a certain action, right? So we can go before God and there's scriptures that says we can go boldly before the throne of God and ask for our needs. So he wants us to come. He's inviting us in. There's no secret door or uh, passageway where only certain people get in and have access to God. The only thing that restricts our access to God is us. All we have to do is believe in Jesus and we've got access to the King of Kings. It's pretty incredible. So I would encourage you that if you are worrying a lot about things or if just worries nag you and anxiety is hard, I would start praying without ceasing. And what that looks like for you may be different than me. Um, But the trick isn't to, the trick for me has been a combination of do not worry, pray, but then I have to let go. Because if I pick it right back up, then I didn't really give it to God. I just talked with God about it, which is okay. We can chat with God about things. But if we want change and we want our worry to not weigh us down, we have to pray and let it go. And here's the deal. We get to practice that. So God doesn't expect us to be perfect at this right away. Or even if we're 80 years old, it doesn't. he doesn't expect us to have this all figured out. It's always going to be kind of a practice trial run sort of thing with our God. So we get to just practice doing this. This is another invitation. I keep seeing so much of his scripture as invitations right now. And that's just, it's really sweet way. Instead of seeing uh, scripture as a bunch of to-do rules or things that we have to do or we're bad if we don't or whatever, it's more like, no, 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 I don't want you to worry. Not because worry is sinful, it's because worry weighs you down. Worry isn't going to change anything. So let me take care of everything that you need taken care of. Now, you can ask him where to find your car keys or to bring home your prodigal son anything and anything and everything in between. He wants it all, you guys. He just wants it all. And he wants you to grow in your trust with him because he's trustworthy. And if there's been something where you felt like God really let you down, where you let go, you didn't worry, and something really horrible happened, you can give that to God too. You can just be honest with him. I think God prefers our honesty over just um, kind of blindly following rules. So if you are not in a place where you can let go and trust God, talk to him about that. It's okay because he knows your heart, right? He knows what you're thinking anyway. So you might as well just be honest with him and say, hey, God, I don't get this one thing. This happened and I can't get past it. I, all I can do is worry because I feel like you failed me. God can handle that, you guys. And then the trick to that kind of prayer is to listen. Give it to God. Be honest. You won't hear back, you awful, awful child for not trusting me. You're going to hear something really sweet. I promise. He's a good God. And even when things don't make sense on our end, he can give us a way to get through. He can give us um, comfort that we didn't have before, and he can give us that peace that passes all understanding. 
So I just encourage you to kind of take this idea of do not worry to a whole new level in your faith walk today.